Apple finally did it. They brought back the iPhone SE, the smaller iPhone that so many people have been asking for and reluctantly upgrading to newer, bigger iPhones in the interim, unfortunately. Retaining some of the compact nature along with the lower price tag, people are obviously curious if the new SE is what they were hoping for all this time. Well, since the iPhone SE that I bought finally arrived, let's check it out and see if it has what you were looking for in this complete walkthrough. Now, if you're not familiar, complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the hardware. First, the new iPhone SE has a 4.7 inch 16 by nine aspect ratio, 1334 by 750 resolution IPS LCD display. We have an advertised 1400 to one contrast ratio, DCI P3 wide color, and a supposed 625 nits of max brightness. Above that screen, we have a seven megapixel F 2.2 aperture front facing camera that looks like this. And here's what it looks like compared to the next tiered iPhone that I happen to have, the iPhone 11, along with some other devices. Also, that front camera is capable of recording in 1080p at 30 frames a second. And this is what that looks like and what the microphones sound like. Under that screen, though, is something I didn't expect to see on a new iPhone, a fingerprint sensor. Just like with older iPhones, this is how you will unlock the phone, confirm purchases in iTunes, enter in passwords on websites, etc. And it's also your home button and you can double tap it to get to multitasking and tap and hold it to get to Siri. Because of this, there is no face ID, and because of that, no emojis. Sad. Also, you'll be using the original iPhone gestures of swiping down anywhere from off the top of the screen to get to your notifications, and anywhere from the bottom to get to your control center. This versus the dragging down from specific areas at the top to get to either on devices that no longer have a home button. Personally, I already know so many people who prefer this to face ID in the first place and want a smaller iPhone in general, so I'm sure they're already excited at this point in the video. Speaking of the size though, it's not the size of the iPhone SE. Sorry for those who actually still wanted that. Times and content on the screen has changed and instead of a four inch screen from the original iPhone SE, we're still pretty close at 4.7 inches that I mentioned earlier. And it's a bit smaller still than the iPhone 11 Pro's 5.8 inch screen, the next smallest iPhone by body size that you can currently buy. It comes in three colors, black, white and red, which is part of Product Red, a nonprofit charity organization that usually supports AIDS research. But a portion of that price when purchasing this model now goes to COVID-19's global fund. And frankly, the red looks really good too. It's made out of a color matched aluminum frame with glass on the front and back. And based on multiple investments in Corning, the glass maker who makes the ever popular Gorilla Glass on most Android devices, it's safe to say it's a Corning strengthened glass, but it's not technically Gorilla Glass. The phone is IP67 rated, meaning it can be submerged for up to 30 minutes under one meter of water. Moving around the phone, we have our volume buttons on the left, along with our notification slider that can be used to toggle between ringer on and off. On the right, we have our power button and our SIM card slot. At the top, we have nothing. At the bottom, we have one of our stereo speakers. It's the one on the right. The one on the left is not really anything. And the other stereo speaker is actually in the earpiece. And here's what they sound like on full blast. Noodletown may seem modest, but notice how carefully each vegetable has been cut. The way each piece of carrot, each bit of green onion is exactly the same size. Next to that, we have our lightning port that supports 18 watt charging that can supposedly give your phone 50% battery of the 18, 21 milliamp battery that's in here in about 30 minutes. Unfortunately though, they do not include a charger capable of that in the box. If you have an iPad charger and a USB-C to lightning cable, you can use that to get faster speeds or you can just purchase an 18 watt charger online. Now, instead though, we have our standard charger. So per the usual, let's see how that does. And now let's do an albeit unscientific test and see how long the battery lasts.
The phone can also charge via Qi wireless charger, which is actually rare on a phone in this price range and kind of a nice inclusion. Under the hood, we have Apple's own A13 Bionic chipset, the same that is in the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max, by the way. And it's paired with three gigs of RAM and the choice of either 64, 128, or 256 gigs of NVMe storage. For connectivity, we have Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 6, which is another rarity in a phone in this price range, by the way. And you can learn more about what Wi-Fi 6 is in my Decoder Explainer series that I'll link here. Moving around the back, we have our single camera system. This main camera is essentially the same camera from the iPhone 8. It's a 12 megapixel f1.8 aperture camera with dual pixel autofocus and optical stabilization. Regardless, here are some sample shots from it, the iPhone 11, as well as some other devices. video, the iPhone SE can record in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and we can capture slow-mo up to 1080p at 240 frames per second, in HEVC format, by the way. Now, really quickly, let's dive into the other camera modes on the phone. First, we have time-lapse, which allows you to take a video, and then it is automatically sped up. Then we have portrait mode, which tries to use software to mimic a more DSLR with a fast aperture look by separating the foreground and the background with some bokeh and blur. And lastly, we have panorama, which allows you to start taking a photo on the phone and then pan it to the right or left, and it'll then stitch all of those images together to create a wider, more panoramic shot. Now, one feature that is missing, however, from these models compared to all of the other recent iPhone models is that there is no night mode. Night mode basically takes a series of long exposure shots and combines them to get a much better lit low light image. You can check out my decoder episode on how night mode actually works if you wanna learn more about that at the link here. And so you just won't be able to use that on this phone, unfortunately. This is annoying to me, frankly, as considering we have the same chipset and similar camera setup to the iPhone 11, the biggest difference being a change in the focus pixels of the sensor, which I don't really see why that would affect any of this. Regardless, it just feels very much like a deliberate feature left out by Apple, which they have definitely done in the past, just to help differentiate it from other models. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Moving on to software, it's running iOS 13.4.1 out of the box, and since it's the same as most modern iPhones, it will run similarly to those, and most people I feel like are familiar with that and how that works, so I won't dive into that here. Now the iPhone SE second generation is available now for $399 for the 64 gig model, $449 for the 128 gig, and $549 for the 256 gig option. There you guys, complete walkthrough on the iPhone SE's second edition, second generation iPhone SE 2, iPhone SE 2020, whatever you want to call it. What do you guys think though? Judging by the photos that you saw on here and the battery test and that $399 price tag, which is always great, let me know in the comments below. We'll love to hear from you guys. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.